Can you find the shorted capacitor on the power rail of this board? Sure you can. Maybe you'll get lucky and be able to see it visibly. Or you could always do voltage injection. And we all know power rails have many capacitors in parallel along the traces to keep radio frequency interference out and also keep the power signal stable as it's powering digital chips that are constantly switching. So one way to do it would be to inject voltage and that would go and you could see which capacitor is going to get warm. And then you could do that by spraying either some alcohol and see which one is going to evaporate quickly or spend maybe $350 for a decent thermal camera and that would be even better. And of course you have to be careful if that power rail in some way is connected to a power rail of a CPU that might be 1.2 volts, then you can't exceed 1.2 volts. Well, I came along a YouTube video from a gentleman named Richard Langner, and the circuit converts an ordinary digital multimeter to a milliohm meter. And I thought, I'll give this a try to see if it works. And so that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna try that to see if it works. So, and the circuit is simple, easy to build, and it really has a really genius thing. And here's the circuit. You can see it. It's providing, using USB, but I'll actually use um, a bench power supply, 5 volts going through, well, 50 ohms of resistance. So that puts out 100 milliamps on Kelvin probes. And that's really simple. That's just basically you're going to use the outer jacket of a audio cable and you're going to go all the way to the tip and you're going to take the inner jacket and go back to the meter and you're going to take it on the tip the inner and outer jacket solder them together so that that actual current source goes all the way right to the tip so you don't actually measure any loss of the actual cable the test leads um, and so I'll go over to build a little bit but that's what's ingenious about uh, this circuit is is that it has a, a shocky diode and that limits the voltage going across the probes to, well, 0.3 to maybe 0.7 volts, depending what the forward voltage drop of that diode is. And that's what's ingenious about the circuit. So it makes it CPU safe. And you can get milliohm meters commercially and they're expensive. And they also can put up the nine volts out onto the uh, probes. So that wouldn't be really a good option for that. So this circuit is, is unbelievably nice in that respect. So let's actually... Uh, quick go through the build and see if it works. Here's a little more info on what I did to create the probes. I took an old audio cable, cut the ends off. So those ends get cut off and I just pulled it apart to create two separate cables. And I stripped the uh, ends off of it and also of the outer braided area and the inner, twisted them together so that they come together at the end soldered them, make it nice and pointy, and put some heat shrink tubing to make it really come out nice. That's really all there was to making the probe part of it. For more information on how to build it and how it works, please visit Richard Langner's YouTube site. I'll leave a link below in the description. Okay, let's see if this thing really works and if it's accurate enough to actually see where a bad capacitor is. So I just used a regular computer board here and what I did with this board is you're going to see that I took it a capacitor on a power rail. And those three capacitors, where you see the arrow, you're going to see some solder over it. So I effectively shorted that part of the capacitor. And the two above it are on the same power rail. And so that'll enable me to test those capacitors on that power rail and see if I can see any impedance different on the milliohm meter. The only thing I'll say is that those capacitors are only about one millimeter apart. So it may really be difficult to see that. Now, you'll definitely see some resistance on the pads if you're further than that small distance apart. I'll set my meter at millivolts, and my meter has a 200 millivolt scale. So I'll set it at that, and then I'm going to have to multiply it by 10 to actually get the milliohms. And again, we're measuring the voltage drop across resistance across that short. So that's why we're setting it to millivolts. So I just wanted to point that out. 
that follows simple Ohm's law. Okay, I'm gonna actually take these leads, I'm gonna short them together, and you'll see that I have 0.1 showing up. So that's basically saying that I that's the resistance, basically it's one milliohm of that probe. And then when I put it on that short, you'll see that I'm coming out at two milliohms. And again, that shows the millivolts that I have it set, but you multiply it by 10, that's milliohms. So you can see if I don't seat the test strips on there really well, there's even a little bit of impedance coming in through, like three milliohms. And so same thing on that second capacitor three, it's going between three and four. So you do see actually a little bit more than the actual short. And again, you're gonna get more, now that's looking more like four on that last capacitor. So that's kind of interesting. It's kind of, it's, it's tight, but it is shown pretty much where the short is. Now the question is, but that's only a millimeter of trace. So I'm actually gonna resituate these test leads. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna find a ground screw hole and then I'm going to actually go through about two inches of trace. And then I'm gonna see about how many milliohms two inches of trace are on the board. So basically that would be if capacitors are, oh, two inches apart or so. Cause these traces do have resistance. So we'll see what it comes up now. So now we're going, looking at the short through about two inches of trace and we're gonna check out what it comes out at. So let's see here. So that comes out eight milliohms, seven, eight, nine, 10 milliohms. So it's definitely higher. So that shows we're, we're getting further away from the short and that's because I'm about two inches away with the other probe on it. Now it's going down to six. Again, it's, it, it depends how good contact you have. So I would say this really works. It's not bad. It definitely works, this circuit. It's not gonna be telling you exactly where the capacitor is, but you'll get pretty darn close. It certainly would be helpful. So I would say this circuit is worthwhile building. Kudos to Richard Langner who made this circuit. I like it.